And uh, we uh, start with our meeting reports, as always, and we start with the Civil War a couple of weeks back. Civil War 19, and I'll hand you over to Jordan and James for a report on that meeting. Yes, thank you, Andy. In Civil War 19, the South were victorious at the Hednesford Hills Raceway. And James, you were at the event, and... To me, looking at the videos, it looks like a really good meeting, was it? Yeah, it was an absolutely excellent Civil War. Um, a lot of big turnouts the whole way through, big uh, fan turnout as well. Of course, being on the top of Cannock Chase in the middle of January isn't always the warmest place to be. But apart from that, everything was excellent. So in race one, there was a big turnout for race one. And uh, it started off with a 242. Corpse took an early lead. Um However, red flags came out as 106, Darren Terry brand roll over. Um, from there, the actual the North, the North then took a lead, but then as um, after the um, after a lunge into turn three, um, Ed, uh, South's 326 Edward Kennett took the first race win. Um, one of the uh, heats of the day came next with the infantry. Um, from here, we saw Jonesy turn out very late notice um, in his unpainted car. Um, joining his DWA teammate, and he took very little time in going into his uh, TGB rival, um, uh, Jack Foster Jr., um, making sure that um, 551 Carl Douglas Blacknuts took the win. In a very classy touch, he then um, handed his trophy over to a a child. I think it was a random child. It could have been a friend, but... So the National Limited Bangers came out, and... um, um, the uh, I suppose you could say the star man for the South boxer Jack uh, pulled straight off into the middle of the infield, but that didn't stop the South taking a uh, one, two, three, four to put themselves very far in the lead. Um, Joey Reynolds actually took the checkered flag, but then took a black cross for a jump start, and uh, Liam Lake took the win there. So after the first set of um, after the first set of heats, it was North one fifty, South six hundred. Race four for, um, was the light brigade coming in for their second heat. And this was uh, the um, South took the win again, but was followed home by three North drivers to bring the dra- um, to, put, you know, to bring the um, standings a bit closer. Um, Mark Key, 787, took the lead, uh, win for the South. Um, the infantry came back out again. And uh, in a familiar thing from the last Civil War, uh, Adam Hitchcock, uh, Scratchy, pulled his car out. Uh, looking really good in his red Mondeo, but with a gold top this year, which is nice to see Scratchy in a gold top. Um, it was a quieter hit all round. Uh, the North took their fourth, uh, first win of the night, 47, Daniel Wright taking the win for 341, Andrew Jonesy Jones. Uh, the Tanks came out for their second heat, and uh, Timmy Aldridge took the win for a South in a 1 2 3 4. Again, a bit of a quieter hit again. And then the Light Brigade came out for their final. So at this point, um, at this point, it was North 400, South um, South 1100. So the scores drifted quite a bit in the middle, which is a bit of a shame because obviously you want to see both teams really going for it. But as the uh, Light Brigade came out for the final, um, the South took another 1-2-3, unfortunately. But it was 9-2-1. Well, I say unfortunately. I'm a South supporter, but it's nice to see a close event. But it's nice to see it. But Jack Aldridge, 9 took the uh, win for that. In the infantry final... Um, uh, uh, Jack Foster Jr. got his revenge by winning that and this was the first uh, whitewash, literally a whitewash as the North finished 1, 2, 3, 4 the Tanks final, Boxer Jack finished, uh, finally got his uh, car sorted and took the win and then just as the scores were closing up it was then a South 1, 2, 3, 4 which pretty much settled the event from there which meant that as we went into the first DD of the night, which was the tanks, um, only two, only three cars actually bothered turning out for the uh, DD, which is a bit of a shame. Um, all three were South drivers, so the points were definitely going to the South there, making it all but a uh, confirmed result. Um, four fourteen, McCauley Mills taking uh, the win from three four nine, uh, Lewis Noddy Price. Uh, going into the uh, my, going into the micro bangers DD. This was probably one of the events of the night, um, definitely one of the performances of the night, as uh, 198 Brandon Osborne um, managed to get his uh, get managed to get his micro banger moving more times than would seem possible, and taking a lot of hits mm-hmm. around. He ended up taking the win from um, zero four micro uh, Michael Croft. And in the infantry, and in the last event of the night, the infantry day day, 
Um, the uh, infantry, North's infantry captain, Dale Locker, took the win from uh, 129, John Ibrook. Final score, North 1,200, South 2,450. Woo! Yeah! Thank you, Brilliant. time. Overall. <laughs> and of course, that um, means the result is now North 10, South 9. Am I right yep. saying? So the 20th anniversary in 2019, can we level it up? At ten apiece, I um, hope so. Yeah. Certainly. I mean, if you look, at, I mean, if you look at the tanks' performance overall, I think you'd probably have to say that the, the way the the way the Southern tanks performed, if they could perform like that again next year, I think you'd have to say the South would be considered favourites because that's really where the results stretch themselves. Was <laughs> like the, the North tanks, they put up a really valiant effort, but just didn't come near the Southern tanks. Yeah. So. Um... Yeah. Sounded like a great meeting, certainly, and of course, South are bringing it closer together now to uh, leveling up with the North, so uh, we look forward to that next year, and I think now we move on to the Eastbourne Back to Basic 1800cc session from Andy Watts. Thank you, Matt. Yes, uh, the Arlington Back to Basic meeting, the first meeting of 2018 down at the Eastbourne Raceway, uh, saw 70 cars booked in uh, just leading up to the meeting. In the end result, 58 cars turned up out of that 70 cars, which seeing how treacherous the weather conditions were, it was absolutely sopping wet right throughout the course of the meeting. Uh, notable cars on the day were a very late shape Vauxhall Astra H shape for 711, um, a Volvo 440 for 719, and also as well was uh, another VW Beetle coming out, the late shape ones from the Milky Bar Kid, Stephen Turner in 982. But the car of the meeting had to come, as always, from 309 Chris Perry, who turned up. In a Peruda Nippy, a very tiny looking Korean machine, and didn't actually do too bad throughout the night. I think everyone sort of left it alone until the uh, final in the DD, and it managed to struggle on. But very tiny car from Chris Perry, as always, and something very unusual. So, as they went on to the first heat, 20 cars came out for the first race of the night for the Back to Basic Bangers. And it started out very quiet, obviously a uh, usual nudge and spin with back to basic bangers for the opening heats uh, with uh, four double two obtaining most of the damage in the early part of the race uh, going down the back straight. So Dave Moore uh, was the meat in the sandwich between 23 Matt Fayers and uh, Sam Owen in the 77 who joined them going down the back straight and took some severe damage uh, later on in the race uh, the man of that race had to be uh, scrapyard dave who was in a late shape nissan primary in 250 who absolutely annihilated 719s of volvo which had been very nicely painted for that meeting and then just towards the end of the race with only three cylinders working in his rover for weevil tim james absolutely got obliterated down on the house and bend so uh, Scrapyard Dave certainly wasn't truly on a mission to obliterate anything that was in th- front of him, which unfortunately, after those two big hits, did see Scrapyard Dave finished for the evening. In the end, it was a win for T-Boy Tom Farron in 757. On to Heat 2, another 20-car heat. Uh, slightly quieter than the first heat, uh, mainly, again, all uh, pushing and shoving and lots of spinning, which wasn't too difficult seeing how wet the track was as the rain continued to fall throughout the course of that race. So uh, not much damage obtained throughout that race, and in the end, the race win going away to uh, Wiggy, 146 at Dan Wigman. On to Heat 3, again, another race that saw a lot of spinning and shoving, so no big damage coming from that race as well. And it was Brendan Carson in number seven, usually 71. He took heat number three. Later on in the night, they moved on to heat number four, where the action started to pick up just a little bit more as the track was exceptionally wet at this point. There were lots of large puddles around. I think most of the uh, drivers uh, got out of their cars at the end in a very muddy condition. Uh, but again, nothing over the top when it came to the hit inside of things. And uh, in the end, a win going to uh, 414 Jimmy Craig. Heat 5 again, 
saw on this race 28 cars. There was 29 in Heat 4. Heat 5 saw 28 cars come out. And again, nothing too over the top with damage again. So, unfortunate, it was quite a quiet affair for Back to Basic Bangers. And it was 760 Joe Reynolds taking the win. In the final, though, things really did pick up as they went into the final part. The last five laps being the best part of the uh, whole of all six races throughout the course of that night. And uh, in the end, after a massive battle on turn four, just coming up to the checkered flag, it saw 295 of uh, world champion Ashley Wallace coming through to take a victory but again he had to work exceptionally hard to find a gap to come past as there was a massive track blockage on turn four and destruction derby seeing a nice turnout of 10 cars and again it went away to 760 joey reynolds so got to be said for what was 70 cars booked in uh, just towards the end of the week leading up to the meeting 58 turning up in very wet conditions a uh, good start at the Arlington Raceway.